Sticky Bombs are up right now. Uh, we can see the Triage Center is up as well, healing the American troops. Uh, and just a terrific looking flank going on while all that was happening uh, in his base. So Nuclear Sensei is going to be able to capture uh, this vital point right now and uh, is continuing to burn down that bunker a little bit, but unfortunately uh, doesn't have time to do any lasting damage. Uh, instead, it's just going to burn out uh, the MG42 team that was in there. Uh, that's still a pretty effective thing anyways. But you can see the Puma Pump is continuing to come out here right now. Uh, just lots of armored armored cars coming out for Matthew, and he's not going to give up at all. He knows that this is his opportunity to strike. It's a beautiful timing attack right now. Uh, again, people might say, like, oh, it's so cheesy. He rushed with cars. No, it was a perfectly informed decision. Uh, he saw that Nuclear Sensei was going to be slow on having anti-tanks out. Sorry, anti-tank guns out or anything like that. Called him on it, and uh, it's up to Nuclear right now uh, to be able to, def to defend this using only infantry. You can see massive blob of uh, three rifleman squads now coming up, getting a sticky bomb off. Uh, sticky bomb damaging the engine. The other vehicle was also damaged just by incidental fire and right now we can see uh, the might of the uh, infantry squads right now hunting down these vehicles uh, gonna go ahead and get in there as close as they can uh, hopefully getting up another cooldown here for munitions he does have enough munitions uh, hopefully we saw yet another sticky bomb there we go sticky bombs are away and and it's gonna go off and yes the sticky bomb on the damaged engine is enough to destroy the puma armor car and look at the momentum right now that nuclear sensei has charging forward uh, mg42 is firing but it doesn't know which one to fire at there are too many targets uh, op occupying too wide of a range of uh, field of fire there you can see that for the father is activated he's just focusing down that mg42 team as best he can and it's gonna have to retreat and look at the momentum the t the tides have just completely turned right now nuclear sensei pushing forward right now browning automatic rifles just using Using riflemen, nothing fancy here at all. Completely chasing away this Puma armored car, uh, threatening yet another sticky bomb. But unfortunately, that thing does just massacre infantry when they're outside of cover like that. And bam! It looks like we had. Could that have been uh, another mine there? Perhaps. I believe so. Uh, and unfortunately for Nuclear Sensei, right then the medics finished carrying back a couple of wounded bodies here, and uh, the Grenadiers are on the field right now. So the Grenadiers come out just in time to scare them away. Uh, unfortunately, Nuclear Sensei. Uh, he did a lot of damage during that attack, and he really gained the initiative, but he needs to start capturing some points right now. Unfortunately, he had to retreat back with all of his troops, so he didn't get to capture anything. In fact, you can see the Grenadiers right now occupying this munitions point. Uh, but really terrific uh, just to see what people can do uh, with riflemen like that. Uh, in, in my favorite replay, uh, <laughs> this is a little-known fact, uh, but my favorite replay with Nuclear Sensei, he actually... Um, well, actually, my Company of Heroes game... Uh, <laughs> There was a Company of Heroes game with Nuclear Sensei in it. There we go, trying to get my thoughts correct. Uh, that is my favorite Company of Heroes online game of all time. And uh, I'll put a link to that in the annotations. But uh, that's a little known fact right there that uh, Nuclear Sensei holds that title. And it's just from doing stuff like this. Lots of smart stuff with just very basic units. We can see, again, uh, great use again. We've got nothing but infantry versus Puma armored cars. Puma ar armored cars normally would win that match, but he's just making good use of cover and sticky bombs and whatnot. And unfortunately, though, way too many armored cars coming out here, and uh, he's going to have to get out of there, taking a little bit of a catch deep. But, man, really good guerrilla warfare. Whenever you can damage the engine on a vehicle, uh, it just makes it harder for your opponent to react to you in the future. Uh, we can see that during all of that, it looked like he went ahead and got... Um, he got his rapid response to be able to uh, produce infantry units faster, and he got rangers. So we do see infantry versus defensive today is what's going to happen here. And that happens to work out really well, actually. People were asking uh, for infantry. Uh, I did. That was honestly a coincidence, but uh, we're going to get it anyways here. So now we've had armor, airborne, and infantry. Uh, we need to get some more... Uh, I believe we need a terror player now, and we'll have seen everything out there. Uh, but anyhow, uh, it looks like we can see these double Grenadier squads now backing away. Just look at the tenaciousness of these riflemen, getting Vet 1 off of all of that. Look at the focus fire. They're just doing so much damage here. Double Vet uh, Vet 2 and Vet 1 gunning down these poor Grenadiers, and the Grenadiers go down! Look at how much damage he's doing to these gentlemen. Uh, continuing to get the Sticky Bombs, using great cover in the forest right now. Uh, these Pumas should be annihilating these uh, riflemen, but they just can't uh, quite connect with them. Uh, the Medics, however, are continuing to do a great job getting Vet 2, these riflemen, getting 12 kills off of this single encounter here. Uh, doing a fantastic job. Going to have to retreat away, though. However, total map control right now uh, is in the hands of Matthew Hazelwood. Uh, he's got everything he needs right now. Uh, we can see the double... Uh, whoa! <laughs> two. Uh, I thought this was two squads, but it's actually three. It's two squads squads of one and one squad of two. Um, and uh, the Rifleman and Engineers back towards the center right now. Again, just to keep the variety up, I'm going to switch back to Matthew Hazelwood's point of view. Note the colors have changed. Matthew Hazelwood is now blue. And the score is almost dead even. It's 411 right now for Matthew Hazelwood. 417 for Nuclear Sensei. Uh, very close indeed. And now we can see the Rangers uh, that were called in are on the field. They are sprinting to try and get around these guys. 
Uh, the benefit, of course, of Rangers, they have actually picked up some Browning Automatic Rifles. I can hear that gunfire already, uh, but they do, of course, have uh, bazookas right now. Uh, using the bazookas against the vehicles. Uh, great unit there, but unfortunately taking just too much uh, casualties. Uh, from those Pumas and gonna have to retreat away there uh, for the time being again We just see some strategic repositioning coming on here from nuclear And it uh, looks like uh, we have an artillery column coming down. Yes, we do We've got the registered artillery just kind of bombing away at this area uh, forcing uh, Forcing nuclear sensei to get out of here earlier. I think what I missed earlier from my, my recollections of this replay There was an earlier registered artillery on this side of the map that wrecked uh, a couple squads from nuclear sensei uh, Which resulted in some uh, browning automatic rifles being deposited on, on the field here uh, We can see that the m10 tank destroyer is now out there nuclear sensei went ahead and uh, skip tech all the way up to a tank depot uh, nothing new out of uh, the Sturm Armory here, uh, but that definitely upped the ante. And I love this micro here right now. You can see uh, not only did he come in and put some fire onto these uh, armored cars, uh, but he also just kind of ran over some troops. Uh, M10s have a just are notorious for having just a really wide footprint sometimes, and you can really uh, have some pretty good luck with running over troops right now. Uh, but we'll see a massive amount of troops on the field right now in terms of grenadiers, uh, even a single sniper kind of crawling around no man's land. Uh, not a bad idea at all. Uh, perfect positions out there. Uh, we can see now upgrading, uh, upgrading the Panzer, uh, the Panzer Shreks on the Grenadiers, uh, just to try and help out with that uh, M10 tank destroyer. Uh, tank destroyer is definitely uncountered until you get some sort of uh, Panzer Shreks out there. And it looks like during this little encounter here, perhaps, perhaps Nuclear Sensei is actually going to gain control of the center. Fortunately, his uh, Vet 2 Rifleman taking a lot of casualties. He's not going to let that happen, though, uh, retreating them away. And uh, continue to attack on here. It's hard to keep track of Nuclear Sensei because, as you can see, he loves attacking from multiple vectors. Uh, just look at how he neutralized this entire machine gun nest here. Uh, we can see, however, again, tight formation, tight defensive formations coming out right now by Matthew Hazelwood. Uh, the central victory point has gone to Nuclear Sensei. Uh, this M10 tank destroyer, though, is just sitting here, uncountered right now, pegging away at these guys. Uh, we finally have our first Panzer Strike shot right in the side armor. Again, uh, these M10 tank destroyers do not have a lot of side armor, uh, so that will counter them pretty quickly. You can see he's just charging in right now, just trying to run over some troops. Unfortunately, a rear armor hit that time, uh, continuing to squish some gentlemen, uh, trying to go for that no he goes out of control and while he's out of control he manages to take out the puma as well uh damaging that puma armor car everybody crashing into each other and you can see these pioneers here are even uh attempting to salvage uh some material not even waiting for the flames to go out just going to instantly cannibalize uh, all of those wrecked vehicles getting some munitions out of them Ooh, looking pretty good here. A lot of lot of fantastic fighting going on by all these gentlemen. Uh, however, it is now 2-1 to one in favor of Nuclear Sensei. As you can see on the right-hand side, the passive-aggressive warfare continues. It uh, looks like the Browning Automatic Rifleman uh, doing a pretty good job at just fighting off these generic Volksgrenadiers. Volksgrenadiers having to retreat, and it uh, looks like uh, to the victor will go the spoils. Again, I want to keep track of all, uh, all ability points out there, so I'm going to swap back to Nuclear Sensei. Once again, it looks like he hasn't spent anything new for the time being. Uh, but just note, note the impressiveness of, or, or the importance rather, of having a medical bunker out here as a defensive commander. Really, really, uh, really hard to get these troops out of here as a result. He can just stand there, reinforce over and over again. Uh, very, very effective. Uh, I believe, maybe we saw, let me take a look back here at Matthew. I believe, yes, we saw a registered artillery shot right there. Uh, that forced a retreat on those riflemen. That was the sound that I heard there. Again, going back to Nuclear Sensei, fortunately, it's hard to see the global abilities without swapping around the camera angle a lot. M10 Tank Destroyer going all the way up here on the right-hand side. Uh, that's kind of an interesting choice. Uh, he's either getting ready for a wide flank or he knows that some sort of light unit is just going to come in here and he's just going to uh, have, have the Tank Destroyer waiting for it just to try and reinforce that point. Uh, meanwhile, we do see a large attack coming over here on the left. Uh, looks like some just uh, wide-scale repositioning going on. Uh, meanwhile, Matthew is right where he needs to be. You can see he's got, um, again, just trying to, oh, yeah, look at that. A little bit of salvaging going on here in these wrecked vehicles. Uh, he's got all of these grenadiers just kind of sitting around in the center of the map right now and just kind of defending where they need to defend. MG42 team out there as well. Uh, I wouldn't mind just seeing that sit in the bunker. And uh, we do also have a Panzer Command Center up, and I want to see what's building from that Panzer Command. I'm going to swap over there, but it's important not to have any units with the field of fire selected when you change your camera angle, otherwise it sits on the map forever. Uh, taking a look down here, we can see the sniper is just taking some shots here at the troops moving up. Again, want to take a peek, and we do, we have a Panther coming out of the field right now. Uh, Panther is a heavy, heavy tank. Uh, we'll definitely counter the M10 tank destroyers. 
and uh, just kind of solidify his position on the field. Unfortunately, tank destroyers, not the best things at wrecking infantry, but they're certainly impervious to most infantry fire. And here we have it once again, uh, going to have to use his defensive prowess against a multiple pronged attack from uh, from Nuclear Sensei. You can see uh, Rangers in here on the right kind of leading the charge, unfortunately taking a little bit too much damage. Uh, when they sprint up like that, though, they do a good job. And look at that, just kind of busting apart the troop formations, even getting some nice little squish kills in there. <laughs> the M10 tank destroyer just kind of disrupt everything, uh, perhaps leading the charge as the infantry move in. No, it looks like instead he's just distracting while his infantry actually capped that center victory point. Um, no further attack, however. That was just a drive-by. That was, honest to God, uh, drive-by squishing and then moving out of there. Um, Left-hand side, victory point going to the engineers right now. And uh, I don't think uh, Matthew Hazelwood is going to have any trouble just kind of redistributing his forces and capturing these victory points. Looks like he's even moving out. Not sure why this MG42 is moving so far out, uh, taking some unnecessary casualties from this uh, Pite Lusky building. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, and over here on the left-hand side, we can see that, no, the engineers get picked off by a bunch of grenadiers that saw them trying to capture, uh, well, saw them capturing that victory point and uh, inflicted some casualties out there. So it uh, looks like the M10 tank destroyer getting some repairs on its way home. Uh, we still have the tank depot out there, obviously, and a 280-millimeter rocket barrage is now available as well to Matthew Hazelwood here. Uh, we can see uh, there is that reactive artillery going off. I keep calling it reactive. It's registered. Reactive artillery was the name of it in Company of Heroes Online. Oh, well, so sue me. And man, man, is Matthew Hazelwood being ballsy with these troops. He knows, again, a uh, really good sense of the timing attacks here. Uh, he knows that, really, there's only an M10 defending. So he just comes all the way on down here with his Panther. Uh, Panthers are big, bad, beautiful units right now. Uh, they are super heavy tanks. Uh, or at least pretty heavy tanks. And yeah, you can see, though, uh, he was driven away again by just infantry. Uh, the combination of bazooka shots coming out of those, uh, coming out of the uh, rangers there was enough to kind of drive him back. Uh, but he definitely wanted to come up there and see if he could get a free kill. Uh, did do some serious damage to that M10, which is now once again being repaired. I'm going to take a look back at Nuclear Sensei. Once again, map colors swapping around here. Hasn't spent any more points, still sitting at, at uh, the Rangers Colin. Uh, but there's lots of interesting options that he could have been getting uh, in terms of... Uh, he could have got uh, the defensive abilities to allow uh, his infantry to place up mines and things like that. But we haven't seen too much of that yet. So hard to tell exactly what he's getting. Was that a missed sniper shot? I believe it was. Uh, that sniper actually took a shot and didn't kill anybody uh, of these Vet 2 riflemen who are out here. And unfortunately, now he's moving around. I guess he didn't want to have anything to do with that. Uh, we'll take a look around right now. A little bit of an in-between battle right now. And again, just kind of uh, some investigor investigatory attacks going on right now for Nuclear Sensei. Getting the sticky bomb off, always a good idea. Uh, it's a very annoying thing to do. It'll definitely damage an engine there. Uh, sometimes you can immobilize and destroy tracks and stuff like that. Uh, in case you're not aware, by the way, for the Dawn of War 2 players out there, or just for the beginning Company of Heroes Online players, uh, usually what happens is... Uh, Basically, whenever you damage an engine, uh, damage the treads or immobilize it or destroy the engine or kill the gunner or destroy the gun, you're basically talking about rolls on a critical hit table. And uh, what happens is that sticky bombs always do a roll on the lighter critical hits, which include damage engines and things like that. Um, when you get heavier critical hits, you can sometimes destroy the guns and stuff. That's what happens when you shoot it with an anti-tank gun. 